Good early evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for our panel to discuss the various views on U.S.-China relations, the outlook for Taiwan, is Taiwan like Ukraine? What about the bipolar ideological conflict that seems to be developing uh, with China and the outside world? Um, we have uh, done some planning for this session in order to try to make it more interesting for all of you and for ourselves. We're gonna kind of change the format a little bit from the normal presentation and sequence of different points of view on the same subject, but try to develop some interchange. Uh, I come from the United States where we've been protected by two oceans, and so the rest of the world always looks very similar. We, we, we take a position on terrorism or communism or uh, some other issue when we expect the rest of the world to take the same position because they're all the same out there. And I, what I hope today's panel does is show how different the perspectives are from different national points of view. And we're going to ask each of our participants on the panel to, to, to speak on, these, on their particular viewpoints. Um, there's a, a quality, I mean, we're, we're assuming that there's a U.S. position and that it's pretty uh, strong in opposition to China going into this discussion. I'll point out that this afternoon, the czar of American Indo-Pacific policy in Washington, Kurt Campbell, made a presentation in which he said, in fact, we're returning. He didn't use the word to engagement because he's the author of the obituary of engagement with China. But he said, we're returning to normal interstate relations as a result of China co effectively capitulating to American policy uh, over the next year. We can talk about that and, and many other subjects in the course. But today we have a, um, a very distinguished panel that represents a fairly broad range. Unfortunately, it's a mantle, not a panel with men and women representatives. We all apologize in our own way for not being able to reflect the gender differences that we should be on this, uh, uh, on this stage. Uh, you have the biographies of our, of our presenters. We've got uh, John Andrews, who is a senior journalist for The Economist. Jean-Pierre Cabastin, who is a longtime China scholar and is at the um, uh, at Institute for Research in Hong Kong. Uh, Renaud Girard is from the Figaro uh, in Paris. Uh, Mr. Hosoya, professor from Keio University and uh, doing a lot of international policy research. Uh, Him Min, Min, Min Li, who is a uh, long-time trade professional for the Korean government uh, and is now working for Kim and Chong, a very distinguished law firm. And we've got Mr. Samir Saran from uh, India, from Delhi, from the uh, uh, Observers Research Forum. And then via the virtual connection, we have Professor Wang Ji Si from uh, Peking University. Uh, we're glad to welcome him here. I'm greatly disappointed we can't have you here in person, Ji Si, but we're so happy you could at least participate this way. Now, um, to get us started, I'm going to ask panelists to respond to a question about just how far do you think, does your government at home think the U.S. will succeed in evoking or forcing uh, your government, the government you watch closely from your perch, to follow the U.S. in its policy of pursuing a bipolar world where we uh, divide between those who are uh, in favor of China's disruption of the liberal international order or support the American position of protecting and developing the international order. 